Good to see those of you who are here are here, and the Lord is here. Can you put that light on for me, please? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we've been talking about uh, spiritual warfare in Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to veer off of that today just for a minute. Uh, how many of you have, have ever heard the word revival? You ever heard the word revival before? Just heard the word? Some of you, right, let me see your hands again. How many of you have ever heard the word revival? One, two, three, four. Uh, several of you have, but most of you have. Can anybody tell me, just in you know, just summarize what, what are we talking about when we talk about revival? You got any idea? What's it mean? A lot of times in our churches, we 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 call a series of meetings a revival. We used to have when I, I was young, we'd have a revival meeting that would last maybe two weeks, and we'd meet every night for two weeks, and the preacher would come and preach. We called it revival. We were praying for. Revival, but just because we called it revival and we're praying for revival didn't really mean it was revival. <laughs> Sometimes it was just good preaching and good singing, and we go home, but nothing much had changed. Real revival uh, happens when people really, really, really get serious about following Jesus, and and it usually is. is there's several sides of it. One is real repentance going on. People get overwhelmed with their sin instead of these barriers and that they're holding up and protecting themselves and covering up their sin and rationalizing and excusing it, they come clean with God. And they say, Lord, I have sinned. I've been lying. I've been deceiving. I've been full of myself. I've been lazy. I've not been doing the responsibilities you've given me. You know, we, we're genuine repentance. I've been, a, you know, and, and, and that's part of it. Uh, it, it goes, usually it's accompanied with real worship because you're realizing how awesome Jesus is. And you just you, you want to really worship him. And so there's worship and there's repentance and it's it's a it's an incredible experience when it happens. It occasionally breaks out from time to time in different places where people begin to see Jesus for who He really is and they get excited about Him. Um, I prayed for revival for our country for years and years and and I and I and, I, and how many of you have heard lately in the, anything in the news about? Uh, what's happening in Asbury College in Kentucky? Have any of you heard of it yet? A few of you have. Okay. All right. It, it seems like revival may be really happening there. Now, let me say something else. There's a caution here. Anytime God begins to work, we got an enemy called the devil, right? He wants to substitute stuff and, and, and give you a, a substitution to get you away from the true thing. You with me here? So what Satan will do sometimes is substitute. You know what I mean by? By emotionalism, you know, there, there are songs, for example, we like to sing them. Some of them are wonderful songs. They really are. If you think about what we're singing, we sing some awesome songs here and in our churches. But you can get in, caught up in that song, with just the emotions of it, without thinking about the Lord much. You see what I'm saying? You're just enjoying the emotions. Some people are very emotional. They like to shout. They like to cry out. And, that's funny. and there's nothing wrong with that. I Sometimes I shout a little bit. Sometimes I cry a little bit. And, and I think that's a good thing if our focus is really on the Lord. But sometimes people get wrapped up in the emotions themselves or just some kind of weird experiences and things. You know, some people get caught up in it. But, but when God's really bringing about revival, repentance, which you know what repentance means? I've tried to explain it just then, but it means you realize you've got sin and it's serious and, it, and God hates it. And it's, it's going to ruin my life and the lives of others. And so we, we really begin to see sin like God does and we repent. Now, so listen, some of us may be walking in revival in general. I'm not saying all of you need revival. But many, many times in any size group, there are a lot of people that need this. Well, what's happening at that school is people are coming and there's nobody orchestrating it as far as I can tell. Now, I don't know all of you that have been up there, but nobody's orchestrating it. They're just students coming and praying and getting right and they're going to each other and, and confessing their sins you know I've, I've had a bad attitude towards you I hurt you I know I said something I shouldn't have said please forgive me and there's a lot of that going on and there's a lot of worship going on a lot of prayer a lot of weeping a lot of people on their faces just crying out to God and it's gone on now for over a week I think I, I, it's just it hasn't stopped I mean sometimes students will leave and they'll come back Others will leave and come back, and, but it's just started, it started at a chapel service, and it just kept going and going and going and going and going. That sort of thing's happened before. It happened at Asbury in 1970. That's been, what, 50 years ago now? Yeah, over 50 years ago. Anyway, it, it happens from time to time. 
So I just want to encourage you to keep praying for revival to happen here. Uh, not the signs of revival, but revival. Not, not just people putting on a show, but a, a awakening that causes us to genuinely repent of sin, to really realize who Jesus is. Many times throughout history, revival has begun with young people. We're talking about college-age kids right now uh, at Asbury. That's typical. College-age kids is typical for revival to break out, sometimes high school. But, uh, but it often be breaks out with young people. It's just kind of the way God works. I don't understand it all. So I just want us to be praying for that. There's a song that we used to sing when I was young, uh, an invitation. You know, how many of you know what an invitation is in a worship service? You know what an invitation is? Okay, nobody does? <laughs> I want to. Uh, well, when I was young, uh, you know, in our churches, I'm, I'm a Baptist. I've been raised a Baptist. I've been a Baptist for I'm not, we're not the only ones that do this, but a lot of churches at the end, you know, we start service with worship and praise, and then the pastor brings a message from God's word, and then instead of everybody just going home, we have what we call an invitation. It's a final song, and the pastor usually says, look, we want to invite you to seriously consider making a commitment to Jesus. Uh, if you've never committed to him, now's a good time to do it. If you need to repent of some sin, now's a good time to do it. If you need to join our church, now's a good time to do it. If you need to follow the word baptism. So it's, a, it's an invitation. It's an inviting people to come and make decisions. Most of the time, most invitations, there's not much response. But occasionally, there's a huge response. Uh, and But an old, response, an old song, we always sing, you know, you know, if you've ever watched a Billy Graham crusade, they, they usually sing, Just As I Am. Do you remember that song? It's an old song that we used to sing at invitations. But there's another song that we used to sing when I was young. And I don't know if I can sing it or not, but it started like this. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by, Savior, Savior. My humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Any of you ever heard it? Nobody's ever heard it? It's, it used to be an old song that we sang a long time ago, but it's a great song when revival's bringing, breaking out. You say, Lord, if you're reviving others, I want to be in on it. I want, I want to just get more excited about you than I've ever been before. I want to forget about it. There's another song that's newer than that one that we used to sing about when we're praising the Lord. And, and it was, this is the second verse. It was said, like it said, so forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Him. Just forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Him. Just forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Christ the Lord. It's another great revival song. And somehow, we have to get to the place, that whether we're part of that quote revival or not, where our focus is not so much on me. It's not what people are thinking about me. It's not, am I going to embarrass myself? Am I going to look foolish? That's all from the devil. He wants you to concentrate on yourself all the time. And we need to say, Lord, I want to concentrate on you. I want to concentrate on others. I want to learn how to just repent of my sin and be sincere and true and honest before you and let you change me, maybe what you want me to be so I can bring you the most glory. That may be happening in Asbury. And I'm praying. And by the way, uh, there have been about, I think, maybe 20 other colleges or something like that who are sending buses to Asbury so they can see what's happening and experience what's happening maybe themselves. And it seems to be spreading. So I would encourage you, pray about this, and ask God to help you walk in his spirit, walk in revival, so that he can usually get glory for himself. Guys, we're living in an age, did you hear the other day, I need to stop, we're out of time, but today, girls especially, are dealing with enormous amounts of depression and discouragement and, 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 and anxiety, and some of them suicidal, hurting themselves, all over the country, it's happening to girls. A lot of it, I'm totally convinced, has to do with the confusion that's been brought on by the gender revolution, trying to get boys to think they might be girls, trying to think girls they might be boys, all that junk. It's ungodly. And then the, and then the change in sexual attraction, trying to, you know, I'm a boy, but I'm attracted to boys. I'm a girl, 
contract with girls. God says that's ungodly. And, and that sort of thing has to be repented of. It's bringing kids into real depression and discouragement. We need to pray because it'll affect even schools like this. It'll infect us. I mean, we can be infected by satanic stuff. We can be infected by God's stuff. So let's be let's praying, okay? Take it seriously. I know I've taken too much time. you have anything you want to say before I pray? Okay, Zach. I didn't hear you. Your knee? Okay. Anything else? All right, Father, thank you so much for these kids. Thank you for what you seem to be doing in Asbury. Thank you for those who, who seem to be genuinely repenting of sin, genuinely forgetting themselves, genuinely concentrating on you and worshiping you, genuinely getting right with other people, genuinely turning from things that have been really destroying them, Lord. And I pray that that revival would be real, and I pray that it would continue, and I pray to bind Satan from his limitations where people get emotional and without being spiritual. And, Lord, I pray that that would not happen. And I pray, Lord, you'd start here, you'd, that you would not pass us by. Lord, we want to be part of that revival. So may there be awakening here as well. Lord, we just ask you to be merciful to us and help us to walk closer to you. I do this, Zach, and pray you to heal his knee. And I pray for other people who need to be healed and strengthened and given grace right now. You know what the needs are. So we put them in your hands. Please, Lord, help us to walk close to you today. Keep our focus on you. We don't want to be the same as we were yesterday, Lord. We want to be more and more like Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen.